My name is Javier Hernández and my nickname is Chicharito. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and did you know we are coming up to the 5 year anniversary of the GTX 1060 first launching. It really is crazy to me to think it's been that long, but in that time the 1060 has really cemented itself as a legendary graphics card, and it's still the single most popular GPU according to the Steam hardware survey. So as we are approaching that milestone, I thought it was high time to do a revisit of the GTX 1060 and see how this GPU fares in 2021. Back when it launched in 2016, its main rival was AMD's RX 480 8GB, though that GPU was later superseded by the RX 580 in April 2017. In this video then, we are testing all three of those GPUs over 20 games at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. We're doing this using high settings instead of very high or ultra, simply because I feel that is more realistic and more useful for this caliber of card. Of course, we're also using our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This consists of an i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1GHz on all cores, and that's paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard and 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600MHz. For the GTX 1060, we're using NVIDIA's stylish looking Founders Edition, while we also have AMD's RX 480 reference card. There was no reference for the RX 580, so instead we're using the Sapphire Pulse. Of course, we're also using the latest drivers at the time of testing. So for Nvidia, that was the 466.77 driver, and for AMD, we used the Adrenaline 21.5.2 driver. In this video, we are going to go over every single one of the 20 games we tested, but I will make sure to put timestamps down below so you can use the YouTube chapters feature if you want to skip ahead to any particular game. With that said, let's get into the results. Kicking off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, here we're testing with the high preset. At 1080p, it's all very close between the three GPUs we're testing, with the RX 580 proving nominally faster than the GTX 1060, but only by a single frame on average. Relatively speaking, that gap does increase at 1440p, with the RX 580 proving 5% faster than the GTX 1060, but that's only a difference of 2 FPS. Most importantly, none of our GPUs were able to prevent the 1% lows dipping below 30 FPS at this resolution. Next up is Borderlands 3, and once more the GTX 1060 and RX 480 are absolutely neck and neck in this title, both delivering fractionally less than 50 FPS on average. The RX 580 delivers an extra 7% compared to the 1060, but again, whether you'd notice that extra 3.6 FPS is another matter. At 1440p though, the GTX 1060 does fall away, actually coming in 12% slower than the RX 480. However, once more we can see neither GPU is delivering a particularly smooth experience at this resolution. Remedy's Control is next, and this is a very interesting title. Over the last couple of years, it's become a bit of a poster child for Nvidia, as the game is heavily optimized for the Turing and Ampere architectures. It seems Pascal wasn't quite given the same attention, however, as the RX 580 absolutely crushes the 1060 here. The AMD GPU is actually 20% faster at 1080p. At 1440p, the results do get compressed somewhat, but the RX 480 and 580 are still convincing winners here, something I certainly didn't expect when testing this title. Meanwhile, for Cyberpunk 2077, here we opted for high settings, but in hindsight that really is too stern a test for these GPUs, even at 1080p. For what it's worth, both Polaris GPUs deliver higher frame rates than the GTX 1060 across the board, but the results are so compressed it hardly matters. You definitely want to drop down to medium or even low settings with this caliber of GPU when playing Cyberpunk. Next up is one of the more recently released games we are testing, and it's Days Gone. Using the high preset, all three GPUs are good for an average of 60 FPS at 1080p, and that is really good to see. The RX 580 is fractionally faster than the GTX 1060, but by less than 3%, so it really is too close to call. Cool. That also goes for 1440p, 
where we're getting a very playable experience from any of the GPUs tested, with the GTX 1060 slotting in between the RX 480 and the RX 580. As for Death Stranding, this is a particularly well-optimized title, and we are actually able to get away with maximum settings here, with all three GPUs still averaging over 60 FPS at 1080p, so that's really not a bad showing for cards that are now 4 to 5 years old. The RX 580 is strongest at 1440p, delivering about a 10% boost over the GTX 1060, though the RX 480 does sit much closer to its Pascal rival. Moving on though, we come to Doom Eternal, and this is another game where there is a real, absolutely tangible difference between these three GPUs, as the Polaris cards absolutely crush it here. The RX 480, for instance, is 23% faster than the GTX 1060, while the RX 580 turns that into a huge 36% advantage. Now, to be clear, you are still getting a great gaming experience from the 1060, it's just that the AMD cards are that much faster. The same goes for 1440p as well, where the 1060 is still averaging over 60 FPS, but the RX 580 is 42% faster, delivering just shy of 90 frames per second. As for F1 2020, despite being highly impressive in terms of the visuals, this game delivers great performance, with all three cards hitting over 100 FPS at 1080p. Once more though, it is the Polaris GPUs coming out on top, though the RX 480 and 1060 are basically neck and neck. That's the same at 1080p or 1440p, with the RX 580 coming on strongest at the latter resolution, where it's now 10% faster than the GTX 1060. Far Cry New Dawn is our next game to look at, and despite being a DX11 title, it's the AMD GPUs which are again the faster cards here, when typically we'd expect Nvidia cards to be stronger using this API. The GTX 1060 for instance is 6% slower than the RX 480, while it's 9% behind the RX 580 at 1080p. Those AMD GPUs do even better at 1440p as well, with the RX 580 now beating the GTX 1060 by a 14% margin, though it is still worth pointing out that the GTX 1060 is still doing a great job here when using the high preset. Gears 5, however, gives the GTX 1060 its first clear victory over the two Polaris GPUs. At 1080p, it proves a whopping 25% faster than the RX 480, though that is cut to 16% when compared to the RX 580, and this is despite Gears 5 being an AMD-sponsored title. At 1440p, both AMD GPUs catch up significantly, however, with just a 2 FPS difference between the 1060 and the 580 now, though the 1060 is still decently faster than the RX 480. Hitman 3 is another new title released in 2021, but it still runs very well on these GPUs when using high settings. The GTX 1060 and RX 480 are as fast as each other at 1080p, with the RX 580 just edging ahead by a few frames. Not much changes as we step up to 1440p either, with the RX 580 coming in 15% faster than the GTX 1060, but that's a difference of less than 7 frames per second. Horizon Zero Dawn as well is another very close one, with the GTX 1060 just about coming in the fastest of the three GPUs, but I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference when actually gaming. Horizon is also a little bit too demanding for these cards at 1440p, so you definitely want to dial back the image quality settings to get a higher frame rate. Moving on to Metro Exodus though, this is another title where we see a clear advantage to the GTX 1060. It's 14% faster than the RX 580, increasing to 23% when compared to the RX 480, and that's all at 1080p using the high preset. Things are definitely closer at 1440p, but it is still Team Green that has the advantage in this title, with a 9% lead now for the 1060 over the RX 580. We can see the complete opposite, however, in Resident Evil Village. This time it's Team Red in the Ascendancy. GTX 1060 still delivers a very smooth experience at 1080p, but the RX 480 is actually 23% faster, while the RX 580 is a whopping 30% faster here. Those Polaris GPUs also deliver a much smoother experience at 1440p, averaging close to the 60fps mark, 
while the GTX 1060 just cannot keep up. Once more, the RX 580 is over 30% faster, so it's a clear win for AMD. Red Dead Redemption 2 also continues that trend, and it's worth noting we're testing with high settings and the Vulkan API. We are once more seeing double digit leads for the Polaris GPUs, with the RX 480 proving 21% faster than the GTX 1060 at 1080p. That scaling stays pretty consistent at 1440p as well, though frame rates are lower here, and we can see the GTX 1060 is unable to keep the 1% lows above 30fps. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this is a game where all three GPUs perform much closer together. The RX 480 is still just about faster than the GTX 1060 at both 1080p and 1440p, but there's honestly not a lot in it. The RX 580, however, is between 11 to 16% faster, though the real world frame rate difference doesn't seem quite as significant as those percentages might suggest. As for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, this is actually pretty similar to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but just in reverse. That means the GTX 1060 is the fastest GPU of the three we've tested, but it's still not going to make much of a difference either way. That's particularly the case at 1440p, where the 1060 is just 6% faster than the RX 580, though it is 16% faster than the RX 480. Again, we can also see an almost identical trend to Jedi Fallen Order when looking at Total War Saga Troy. Here we can see the GTX 1060 is sitting top of the pile, but it's only a touch ahead of the RX 580. The RX 480 is further back though, proving 13% slower than the 1060 at 1080p. That doesn't really change either as we step up to 1440p, while the frame rates are obviously lower, the scaling is pretty consistent. Getting to the end of our testing now, our penultimate game is going to be Watch Dogs Legion. And once more, we're looking at a very close affair. The RX 580 is just about faster at 1080p, but whether you notice 58 FPS versus 54 FPS is another matter entirely. It does pull away from the GTX 1060 by 13% at 1440p, however, but that's still just a real world difference of 5 FPS. Lastly, though, we close out with another strong victory for Team Red. In Wolfenstein Youngblood, the RX 580 proves 13% faster than the GTX 1060, and that's actually true of both the 1080p and the 1440p results. The GTX 1060 is much closer to the RX 480, however, and we really do have to say the frame rates are exceptionally good no matter which of these three GPUs you are using. So that is it for all of the 20 games we tested, but let's take a look at the big picture overview. Here with the 20 game average, it's probably not a surprise to see things are as close as they are. Over the 20 games we tested, at 1080p there is less than a single percentage point difference between the GTX 1060 and the RX 480, five years on from their release. The RX 580 is the fastest of the three GPUs, however, coming in 8% ahead of the GTX 1060, but it's still not a crashing victory. That margin does increase at 1440p, however, to a 12% lead over the GTX 1060, while the RX 480 also proves 4% faster than Nvidia's card at this resolution. So while that may be it for our frame rate data, one thing I also logged over all 20 games we tested was GPU only power draw. Taking the 20 game average power draw then, we can see that the GTX 1060 is easily the least power hungry GPU, drawing about 45 watts less than the RX 480 and 65 watts less than the RX 580 at 1080p. That also means the GTX 1060 is clearly the most efficient of these three GPUs, delivering 42% more performance per watt when compared to the RX 480, and that increases to 52% against the RX 580. That is certainly something, but just to put that into perspective, let's take a look at the real world cost involved. So say you gain for three hours a day, 365 days a year. Using average UK electricity prices, 
Here we can see the yearly operating cost for all three GPUs. The difference in power draw can certainly add up over time, but I still wouldn't say the difference in the operating cost is as large as you might think when seeing those efficiency numbers. So then, that really is it for this GPU revisit video. As we saw, yes, the RX 580 has aged the best, but I was honestly still really impressed with just how capable the GTX 1060 and the RX 480 are in 2021. As we saw from our game benchmarks, it is very achievable to hit 60 FPS at 1080p when using high settings in almost all of the games we tested. One thing I did notice in terms of performance though, is that in the games where the AMD GPUs proved the fastest, that was typically by a much larger margin than the titles where the GTX 1060 proved faster than those AMD GPUs. Take the likes of Doom Eternal, Control, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Resident Evil Village. In those games, we are seeing the AMD GPUs come in 20, 30, even 40% faster than the GTX 1060. On the other hand, the GTX 1060 was at most 16% faster than the RX 580, and that was in Gears 5. So yes, while the GTX 1060 is generally almost as fast across the board, there are a handful of titles where the RX 580 and RX 480 can give you that next level of performance. Interestingly though, the GTX 1060 does actually appear to be slightly cheaper on the second-hand market. Looking at eBay UK prices, the GTX 1060 6GB typically sold around the 220 to 230 pound mark, while the RX 480 was closer to the 280 pound range, with the RX 580 more expensive still, up around the 300 pound price point. If you are really desperate to buy a GPU then, personally I would go for the GTX 1060 and save that extra bit of cash for when the current gen cards are more reasonably priced. That will of course depend on the games you play, you might think it's worth spending that little bit more now to get a better experience in the likes of Doom Eternal and Red Dead Redemption 2. But honestly, my main takeaway from this video really is just how impressive it is to see all three GPUs still delivering a very capable 1080p experience in 2021. So guys, that really is it for this video. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down below. Are you still rocking one of these GPUs and how are you finding them holding up? Please do also poke that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. And why not come chat with us over on our Discord server, which is linked in the description below. While you're there, you can also check out our merch store and also consider backing us on Patreon would be awesome where you can see some of our content early and you also get access to some exclusive giveaways. That really is it for me though guys, I'm Dominic for Kikuru and I'll see you in the next video.